Okay, in this video, we are going to look into interfacing a load cell to a microcontroller. Now, the microcontroller that I'm going to use is on my Arduino Nano, which you can see on my breadboard. And I have four LEDs and a beeper connected up to the GPIO lines of the microcontroller. And I have a load cell amplifier, which is made by SparkFun, which contains the HX711IC. Now, this load cell amplifier board is connected up to my load cell, which you can see here. It's a very sensitive load cell. It's a one kilogram load cell. Now there are four strain gauges on this load cell. There's two on the top, two on the bottom, and they're wired up as a wheat stone bridge. So we have four wires feeding our board. So two wires are the excitation voltage, which comes from the load cell amplifier, which is around five volts. And the other two wires are the output of load cell, which is fed into the load cell amplifier and analog to digital converter. Now we extract the data out of these five pins here. So we have VDD and VCC, they could either be 5 volts or 3.3 volts, and I have them connected together. So the VDD powers a chip, the VCC is an is a excitation voltage that feeds the load cell. The data is a data output of the analog to digital converter, and the clock is coming from the GPIO of the market controller, and ground is connected to common ground. So with these five pins, we, get, we could extract the data that's coming from our load cell. Okay, if you go online and search for load cell projects, what you'll usually find is somebody building a waste scale using one of, the, one of these load cells. But I'm not going to do that in this video. Um, if I want a waste scale, I would just go out and buy one. They're very inexpensive. It would be a lot easier. But in my case, I'm using my load cell in robotic applications. So my load cell right now, I have it set up with my four LEDs. So at a certain pressure, I could activate my LEDs. And if I go too far, sets off an alarm. So what I use this for in robotics, I have this uh, load cell embedded into the bumper of my little robot car. And if it comes up to a wall, like here's my wall, and it detects there's a wall in front of it using its time of flight uh, laser uh, range sensor. And it comes up to the wall, and now it's going to test the wall. Can I move this object, or is it a wall? So it presses against the wall, and if it gets alarm, it knows it's something it can't move. But if it comes up to an object, like here's a cup, and it tries to push it, and you can see the LEDs, only two are coming on, and it's actually moving the cup, so it knows it can move this object. It's not a wall. So by using a load sensor, we could actually detect the object that's in front of us, if it's either a solid wall or something that we can move. Okay, I calibrated my load cell, so a 100 gram weight applied to the load cell would turn on my first LED. So that's my 100 gram LED, my first LED. Any other pressure, I apply, I get my second, third, fourth, my, and my beeper. So it's, it's, it's very linear. I come back down to my first LED, my 100 gram reference. Okay, next we are going to look at the code running on the Nano that enables us to extract the data from the load cell amplifier, our 24-bit analog to digital converter, so we could use it in our robotic projects. Now if you go on the SparkFun website, you could download the library for the HX711 chip, and it includes calibration and how to read the ADC converter on the load cell amplifier. But in this video, we're going to go from the data sheet directly into code. So we'll have a look at the data sheet, and then we'll write some code so it'll enable us to extract data from the load cell amplifier. Okay, here's the data sheet for the HX711 chip. So we have to extract enough information so we can write some code. So if we look at the data sheet, we can see it contains a 24-bit analog to digital converter, ADC, and it has an internal amplifier of, of a gain of 128 or 64, which is selectable. Now we could select 10 conversions per second or 80 conversions per second output data rate. And if we go down, we could have a look at the power consumption. So it draws less than 1.5 milliamps and a voltage range of 2.6 to 5.5 volts. Okay, here's the block diagram. If you look at the left, you can see the load cell. And on the very right, you can see the data output pin and the clock input pin, and that goes to our MCU, our microcontroller, so we have to focus on that. Okay, here's the data output information of our analog to digital converter. So the output is 24 bits of data, 
and that will be in 2's complement format. And the output range will be 8, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 hex, that's our minimum, to 7, FFF, FF hex, and that will be our maximum. So that will be our minimum and maximum output values of our ADC. Now if we go down to the serial interface, there are two pins. It's a clock pin, so it's our clock input to the ADC, and the D out pin, that's our data output pin of the ADC. So there's, these two pins are used for data retrieval and for the gain selection. Now the next paragraph will describe how we can extract the 24 bits from an ADC converter, which will give us our 24-bit uh, data word. And then we go down to the gain selection. So we input 24 clock pulses to get our 24 uh, data bits. Then we add one more clock pulse to give us a gain of 128. And if we add three more clock pulses, that's 27 clock pulses, we'll have a gain of 64. So now we just collect all this information, write it down, and we can start writing code. Okay, I've collected all the information from the data sheet so I could start writing code. Now you could skip this part and go directly to the SparkFun website and download the library for the Nano. So this is for students who want to go from data sheet to code without using a library. So this is my setup. I have my load cell. It's a one kilogram load cell. And it's four wires from the load cell to the load cell amplifier, the HX711. So we have a red and black wire, which is the excitation voltage feeding the load cell. And then we have a white and green wire, which is the output from the load cell feeding an amplifier in the HX711. And the gain of this amplifier could either be 64 or 128. And we're going to pick 128 uh, for our co in our code. Now this output of the amplifier feeds an ADC. It's a 24-bit ADC, and it has a D output pin and a clock input pin. And the D output pin is connected to pin 7 of the nano, and pin 13 of the nano feeds the clock of the ADC. Now when we first power up the circuit, the clock will be low, and the D out voltage of the ADC will be high, which means that the ADC is busy. It's doing a conversion. So now we have to wait until the D out pin goes low, which means data is ready for retrieval. Now when D out goes low, we pulse the clock. So we do, we do one pulse, then we read uh, the data in pin, and we'll get a, either a one or a zero, and we'll put that in a register. Now we're gonna have three registers, eight bits each, so we'll have 24 bits total. So that first bit will go into the most significant bit of this register. Then we pulse the clock again, read pin 7, and we put that into the second bit, and we'll do that for 8 bits, so after 8 pulses, we'll have this register full. We do another 8 pulses, we'll fill up this register. Another 8 pulses, we'll fill up this register. So after 24 pulses, we'll have 24 bits in these three registers. Now we give it one more bit, the 25th bit, and that will, that will give us a gain of 128. That's how we program the gain of this amplifier. And after we have the, one, the 25th bit, the D out will go high again, busy, ready for the next conversion. Okay, after we fill up our three 8-bit data registers, we will have a 24-bit word from our ADC. Now the range of this ADC value is 8, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 hex, that's our minimum value, to 7, FFF, FF hex, and that's our maximum value. Now this minimum value and maximum value is in 2's complement format, and we use 2's complement to express a negative number in binary. Now, the most significant bit of, this, of these binary numbers is the sign bit. So if the sign bit is 1, the, the number will be negative, and if the sign bit is 0, the number will be positive. So if you look at the minimum uh, value, it starts with an 8, so the most significant bit is a 1, so this will be a negative number. And if you look at the maximum uh, number, starts with a 7, so the most significant bit is a 0, so this will be a positive number. So if we, if we convert these uh, hex numbers into, into a decimal, we'll get negative 8388608 for minimum, and 8388607 positive for maximum. So this is our range in decimal, our negative to positive, so that's our negative full scale to positive full scale, and we'll use these numbers to calibrate our load cell to our HX711IC. Okay, here's the code running on my Nano, 
and it's written in flash forth and I'll go through it quickly. So this code will read the 24 bits from the ADC converter of the HX711. So the first word we see is dout.low question mark. So it's going to monitor the dout pin of the ADC because if it's high it's busy so we have to wait till it goes low. So we go into a begin until loop and we'll monitor pin 7 and if it's high it will be continuously looping until pin 7 goes low then it will jump out of this loop and continue on. Now pulse will give me one pulse that's a clock pulse so from pin 13 into the clock of the ADC so we set pin 13 low then we set pin 13 high then we set pin 13 low and that will give us one pulse. Now to test this uh, pulse code I have a word 25 dot clock so we have a for and next loop so whatever is in between the for and the next will be run 25 times. So if I run 25.clock, I'll have 25 clock pulses. So if I look at my scope, we can actually see 25 clock pulses. And I'll test out my pulse code. So the main word is read24.register. So that's our 24-bit register. It's going to read it. So the first thing it does is zeros the register. Then it checks for D out to make sure it's low and it's not busy. And when it's not busy, then we could start reading the 24 bits. So we go to a we go into a four next loop. And that will be run 24 times to get our 24 bits. So it pulses, puts a clock pulse in, then it reads pin seven and see if it's high. Now if it's high, it's going to shift the 24 bit register left once, and then or one to it. So it puts in a, a digital one and then reads that back into into the 24 bit register. Now if it reads pin 7 if it reads it if it's low then it will shift the 24 bit register 1 left shift and that will shift into 0 and it'll write that back into the 24 bit register so after 24 bits we'll have our data and at the very end we give it one more pulse and that will set the gain of the ADC to 128 okay so that was my little tutorial on how to interface a load cell to a microcontroller so go online and read about 2's complement, how to express negative numbers in binary. It will help you write the code. And you could get different load cells, different capacities, and different sensitivities. This is a 1 kilogram load cell. And the sensitivity of this load cell is 1 millivolt per volt. So get yourself a load cell and interface board, like this load cell amplifier. And hook up a load cell to the microcontroller and see what kind of robotic applications you could come up with.